This is section 4.3, derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions. Exploring inverse trig functions, let's take a look at f of x equals sine of x. If we do f of pi over 3, if we evaluate that, like we have here, that's equal to the sine of pi over 3, which is, if we look on the unit circle, we have 1 half square root of 3 over 2. The sine is the y value which is the square root of 3 over 2. Now, if we do that somewhat backwards, that's the inverse sign. So if we have f of, let's say, square root of 3 over 2, that's equal to inverse sine of square root of 3 over 2, which is equal to pi over 3. Now, remember, when we do inverse trig functions, we had to pull sine from quadrant 4 and quadrant 1, and that's really from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Those are called principal values. And that worked for sine and for tangent. We pulled it from, pulled values from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. But for cosine, when we did inverse cosine, uh, we pulled values from 0 to pi. That way we had positive cosine values and negative cosine values. And the same with sine and tangent. The negatives are down uh, in quadrant 4 from negative pi over 2 to 0 and then the positive values are in quadrant 1. Derivative of the arc sine. Arc sine and inverse sine are the same thing. So this could say y equals arc sine of x as well. It means the same thing. Well if we take the sine of both sides then we have sine of y equals x. And then if we take the derivative implicitly, we have the derivative of both sides. And here's the implicit part where this derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of x is 1. Then we divide by cosine of y. The division in the last step is safe because cosine of y cannot equal 0. Uh, it will not equal 0 from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. In fact, cosine y is positive for negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So we can replace cosine y with square root of 1 minus sine squared y. And that comes from the fact that sine squared y plus cosine squared y is equal to 1. And then if we minus over the sine squared, we have cosine squared y equals 1 minus sine squared y. And then we would square root both sides. So cosine of y is equal to square root of 1 minus sine squared. And it says that cosine of y is actually positive from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, so we don't have to worry about having plus or minus. We can just use the plus. Well, then we can replace cosine of y with square root of 1 minus x squared. If u is a differentiable function of x with the absolute value of u less than 1, we apply the chain rule. So the derivative of inverse sine is 1 over square root of 1 minus u squared, and they're saying, well, if u happens to be another function, don't forget about the chain rule. If we had inverse sine of, let's say, 3x, that would be 1 over the square root of 1 minus 9x squared, and then times 3. The derivative of the inside would be 3, and when you do the u squared, you square this whole thing. So that becomes 9x squared, not just uh, 3x squared. Applying the formula. The derivative is 1 over the square root of 1 minus whatever is sitting here, whatever we're taking the inverse sine of, gets squared in this spot. So this will be x to the fourth and then times 2x. And we would just put the 2x on top and we would have the derivative. There we go. Derivative of the arctangent. Derivative of arctangent is 1 over 1 plus u squared. And then times the derivative of the inside if the inside happens to be another function other than just x or t. A moving particle. A particle moves along the x-axis so that its position at any time t greater than or equal to 0 is this function. What is the velocity of the particle when t equals 16? So this is position. We're trying to find v of t here, the velocity which is 1 over 1 plus the square root of t squared. And that's the derivative of inverse tangent, 1 over 1 plus whatever is sitting there squared. And then, of course, we're going to have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. 
the inside is t to the one half, so the derivative is one half t to the negative one half, which is one over two square root of t. And now we have to, uh, we can simplify this a little bit. We have v of t equals one over one plus t times one over two squared of t. And we're gonna evaluate this when t equals 16. We have one over 17 times one over two times the square root of 16. That's one over 17 times eight, which is one over uh, 136. One over 136. Derivative of the arc secant, and we're not developing any of these. We developed the first one, but arc secant, in other words, inverse secant, is one over the absolute value of u, square root of u squared minus one. Uh, sine, the derivative of inverse sine of u, is equal to one over square root of one minus u squared. And we notice you have, we have this backwards from sine, but we have the absolute value of u sitting there on the outside of the radical as well. The derivative of inverse secant of 5x to the fourth is one over the absolute value of 5x to the fourth times the square root of 25x to the eighth minus one, and then times, uh, let's see, 20x to the third. And that's gonna be equal to four over absolute value of x square root of 25x to the eighth minus one. The 20x to the third and the 5x to the fourth, they cancel. Well, there, here's all the derivatives. Here's all six of the inverse uh, derivatives. We have sine, the one that uh, we start out with. Here's tangent. And of course, we would multiply by the derivative of the inside. But if it's just x, these are the derivatives. Here is your secant right there, 1 over the absolute value of x squared of x squared minus 1. And here's the good news. If sine, inverse sine, is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared, then inverse cosine is the exact same thing with the exception of the minus. So the inverse uh, co-functions are the same as the regular functions, except for the minus out front. So it's not like we have to learn six different uh, derivatives. We really only have to learn three and then their opposites. A tangent line to the arc cotangent curve. Uh, find an equation for the line tangent to the graph of this at x equals negative one. So we're finding the equation for the line. We have negative one comma something. So we have y equals inverse cotangent of one. So we want to know where cotangent is one from negative pi over two to pi over two. There's your principal quadrants. And that happens right at pi over four. We have square root of two over two, square root of two over two. So we're saying what angle has a cotangent that is one? So y is pi over four. Now we have the point on the tangent line. We need the slopes. So we have to take the derivative. dy dt is equal to negative one over one plus x squared. And this happens to be x squared. There's really no inside function, or we could say the inside function is x and multiply it by one, but that doesn't really get us anywhere. Now we're gonna evaluate this at uh, t equals negative one. Uh, I should have had t here instead of x, actually. Uh, we have negative one over one plus negative one squared, which is negative one over two, so negative one half. The equation of the line, of the tangent line, is one minus pi over four equals negative one half times x plus one. 